In a fava bean crop on Kangaroo Island, Dr Liz Farquharson is digging up plants, checking the roots. And we've got transects within the paddock, which we're going along and sampling uh, 10 plants from three points along each transect. And uh, that will assess the health of the roots along those transects. And then we'll match them up to samples that were taken, soil samples that were taken along the same transects uh, earlier in the year. Six months before this, soil samples were taken by researchers from SADI, the South Australian Research and Development Institute, the research division of the Department of Primary Industries and Regions in South Australia. And they revealed disease-causing pathogens at concerning levels in a third of the paddocks. That's considered pretty high. Now researchers are checking how those soil-borne pathogens have translated to root disease. They have those pathogens that were detected in that first soil sampling, had that manifested into significant um, disease and compromising the, the health of the crop. And the second thing, and we're looking at how well nodulated the, the crops are. And if we do find crops that are poorly nodulated, we can then follow up with a grower. Some of Liz's samples ended up at a grower workshop on the island, one of a series conducted by Saudi scientists with GRDC and Saget co-investment. Local growers bring in plant samples, some performing well, and some badly. For the past few years, these well-organised workshops have run on a national scale in collaboration with grower groups and industry bodies to help cereal and pulse growers detect signs of root disease. Above ground growth is just the tip of the iceberg. It's the roots underneath that are really propping it up. We find most growers don't spend a lot of time digging plants up and looking at the roots, um, partly because it's a bit of hard, it's hard work, they're, not, they're time poor. Um, but also they're not always as sure about what they're looking at as compared with foliar diseases. So hopefully, uh, or the response that we get from these guys is that this actually helps them to be more confident knowing what they're looking at. Um, and hopefully some of them go away and, and utilise it themselves. Saudi researcher Blake Gontar says when growers dig up plants, they should carefully wash the roots and take a close look at the colour and structure. A mass of white roots is usually a sign of a healthy plant, whereas darkened and broken roots signal sickness. So in cereals, we deal with nematode diseases like root lesion nematode and cereal cyst nematode, CCN. Uh, we have fungal diseases like rhizoctonia um, and take-all. And then we also have old mice uh, diseases like pythium. Um, in pulses, we've uh, undertaken a lot of work over the last few years um, uh, using molecular technologies to survey pulse roots. So this is a developing field. Uh, and what we've been able to show is that many of those uh, serial diseases such as root lesion nematode, pythium, rhizoctonia, also affect pulses to some degree. So the first thing we've got here is some common root rot. He steps growers through some of the main things to look out for. Firstly, in cereal. It was a running joke, common root rot's not that common, but some discoloration in those, um, in those roots. But the diagnostic feature is that browning on the sub-crown internode, as opposed to crown rot. So this stuff here, you can see we've got this lower stem browning. On some of these, you can see it's really only gone as far as the outer leaf sheath, whereas on others, it's starting to move through into the actual um, lower stem. We've got some wheat samples here that have come from um, at, with, with very, very typical uh, rhizo symptoms. So what we're looking for in that is those classic spear tips. They're honey brown around the, the point of infection and they've left virtually no root, particularly around the crown. It's harder to visually diagnose root disease in pulses, so they often have to be put under the microscope or through molecular testing. This is an example of a root and crown infection of lentil. And this is a lentil and we can see this really dark lesion around where the seed would originally have been joined um, and often that'll develop into a really pinched taproot um, or almost crown of the plant. We've got quite good infection here of pythium. Where we've lost the loss of the outer root, root cortex is typical of pythium. Faba beans are prone to fusarium. Here it has completely killed the roots. So, and the whole thing is just a, a soft, necrotic, massive disease. Senior Research Officer Dr Catherine Linsell says it's often not just one pathogen causing issues. 
there can be many at the same time. CCN and Crown Rot are probably the two things that you'd want to think about before any perhaps Pythium Rhizo. Can everyone see how it's, it's very sparse? The first step is identifying the problem, and while you might not be able to do anything about this year's crop, there are options for successive seasons, including planting disease resistant varieties. So the first thing that we suggest is identifying the, the causal pathogen. And Sadi has a um, DNA-based soil testing service called Predictor B. And uh, we use qPCR tests to very specifically and accurately identify which pathogens are present in soil. There are fungicides that can be applied. Um, and then sometimes it's just around rotation. So if you know what the pathogen is there, you can usually take some sort of management action. The key message, don't overlook the roots beneath your boots.